Uh, well, good evening. It's six o'clock. It's um, March 16th, 2021. And I'm happy to say that I was the recipient of a Pfizer vaccine this afternoon, and it went smoothly. No problems. Went in, out. I didn't even know I got it. That was it. Home. So, you get? Uh, what brand? What flavor? Pfizer. Pfizer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we'll see how it goes and uh, hope everyone gets theirs in due time. Keep those masks on regardless. What's that again? Keep the masks on regardless. You can still spread it. Absolutely. Double mask, double mask and six feet. Um, keep that going. Yeah. Single mask in the school and three feet. I figured that one out. Well, you know, yeah. sometimes Sleep things days. change. Um <laughs> Okay, uh, is every, are we, um, oh yeah, Fred's here. Fred, how you doing? Okay, we got Fred Barry, we got Jim, we got uh, Dan, Tommy, um, and I guess that's it. So it's six o'clock, let's get this meeting going. Um, our agenda says uh, um, the minutes from the Finance Committee meeting of March 2nd. Um, has everyone had a chance to review those minutes? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. We accept the minutes as written. Second. Okay. All those in favor, Jim? Aye. Fred? Aye. Dan? Aye. Tommy? Tom? Tom said aye. Okay. Bob? Aye. Okay. And I'm myself is, is a yes. So... That's good. All right. Um, we're good there. Okay. Tonight's meeting uh, basically is to review and discuss FY22 budget. And um, I have to commend Brian and Amy for their yeoman work and putting this binder together. It's neat. It's orderly. I can find stuff. Um, nice job. And um, tonight, as you probably saw in emails, went back and forth between myself and Brian that uh, this would not, this will not be a, a deep dive into any one of the budgets, but rather sort of a cursory view and then make a decision as to which and who from what departments we would like to see back just to be able to run through their budget and get a better sense of uh, where they are at, and um, that's how we'll proceed. Um, Brian, how would you like to take this away? Uh, that sounds good. Yeah, I think it'll. I think it'll be useful to get a um, really an uh, overview of where we're going, of where we're starting from, um, <laughs> and figure out who we really want to talk to. Uh, right. My feeling is that. Um, Zoom meetings are, are really inefficient and they take longer to get through and our in-person meetings are sometimes long enough. I think everybody could agree with that um, because conversations can go and go and go. Um, so in the interest of, of trying to, you know, get through these meetings um, in, and in a reasonable number of meetings, um, I thought it would be good to just review what we have so far, which is pretty much all the budgets and, and figure out who we want to invite. Mm -hmm. um, we have two joint meeting times reserved, one um, on that schedule. One was March 23rd and one is April 6th. Um, if we if we can't fit them in, in in those two meetings, I guess we'd have to figure out a third one. Mm -hmm. um, I've scheduled the, the school for March 23rd. They, they, they like to get scheduled a while, you know, uh, a ways out. Um, and that'll be Frontier, um, obviously Frontier, elementary, the elementary school in Franklin Tech. Right, right. Um, and then we can work the other ones in either that night or, Good. um, on the 6th. So, um, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to look at the, um, the, really the comprehensive budget or the budget overview. Mm -hmm. Um, and as you can imagine, this, this changes frequently and it, it, 
Um, so this is draft 1A. I haven't sent this out to anybody yet because these changes are have just happened. And a lot of these are coming from the regional entities. So uh, SCAMS or South County Senior Center, uh, those budgets. And we also, uh, the Tritown Beach is just an estimate, a carryover from last year. But those budgets get, get molded in Deerfield. Um, Deerfield pays the biggest share. So those kind of move around as we go through the process. Uh, but let's go through these. Um, we'll do them. I, I would recommend we do them by category and then we'll, we'll just write down which ones we want to see. Does that work? <coughs> That's good. Okay. Can, can, can I just interject something here though? Um, very often uh, we, um, we zero in on the dollar change, a percent change and rightly so. Um, but also let's not lose sight of the fact that what is the base amount that they're asking for from taxation from uh the what do you mean dollars what do you mean what i mean is this uh let's say a given department is asking for forty thousand dollars and it's a two percent decrease from the year before that doesn't mean you should we should just dismiss them because they have a little less that they're asking for a little less than they did the year before they're still asking for forty thousand dollars, and I think that's the driver. So, I'll put that out there. I don't really understand, but okay. All right, Brian, go ahead. <clears throat> All right. So the first one on the screen is general government, um, and you can see there that the uh, the first increase is in terms of an audit. So. Just a word about last year. We made some, we made some cuts last year, um, and the, the odds a good a good example of that, um, where we made cuts to the budget um, to try to lower the budget. But there's some of these costs that that we have to incur in the future, and the audit's a good example of one that we have to. Um, so in the past, we were appropriating seventy five hundred each year um, for the audit. Um, so that's that's bringing that back online with prior years. Um, town building operations. So this increase is, as it stands right now, is attributed to an increase in custodian hours. Um, as we start to reopen our buildings with the town offices and, and I don't wanna get too much into detail here, but because it'd be a long meeting if I do, um, we're going to need to have more custodian services cleaning. Um, right now, we don't, the town offices and town hall in particular is closed. So we can talk about that um, further. Um, town account, that's an assessment from, from the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Um, assessors, there was a new mandate from DOR that we need to, and maybe Fred can speak a little bit more on this, but as, as the Board of Assessors, but we need to, um, essentially do an appraisal or an evaluation of utilities. Um, so that's um, Lumico and Berkshire Gas. Mm -hmm. So that's where that's coming from. What do they do? What does who do? What, what do they do? So, yeah. So in other words, we're we have an additional seven, eight thousand dollars of assessor's fee for yep. those two particular entities. My understanding is that it's to is to pay our consultant who typically does. And again, this is, these are questions that we can ask. Okay. Yeah. You know yeah. the assessors, but they, 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 they need okay. to they need to do a reeval. Okay. They, they need to evaluate these properties that are held by the utilities. So we can ask oh, that oh. and say that we'd be interested in understanding that. Well, there's, you know, like there's, Brian, there's, there's actually two parts. Uh, yeah, it's looking at the utilities and hiring a consultant to do that because we don't have the expertise to determine values of utility companies. Uh, and it's consultants do, and it's been proven by other towns to our benefit to do this because we come up with higher values for the utility companies that are justified to the state DOR. The other part that's happening to increase 
uh, is uh, this is a reevaluation year. So we look at all property values and compare them to sales and, and make adjustments in, in our factors and values for different items. So uh, that's why the increase, part of the increase as well. Thanks, Fred. Okay, so do we wanna do we wanna note these now, which ones we want to see? And then how do you want to do this, Paul? Yes, let's uh Personally, I would like to uh, understand more. Obviously, now I'm going by the dollar increase. So, sure, I want to see. I'd like to hear a little bit more about town building operations and how those buildings are being maintained and why there's an increase. I'd also like to understand a little bit more regarding um, the additional audit monies. Um, and um, we'll try to understand that. Um, as well as um, the assessors. And so those three, I can see for myself as having some interest in them. Do I have anyone else in that cat? Would anyone else like to see additional personnel or additional explanation from this particular category? Brian, I think that's good. All right. Uh, cultural recreation services, <clears throat> um, Tritown Beach District. So we're still waiting on this budget. Um, there's been some some change on the the board of commissioners, and they're actively meeting to decide what the next year brings. Yeah. Um, but this would be this would level fund their request from last year. You recall the finance committee had some discussions about reducing salaries based on their closure due to COVID. Are they going to close again this year? I, I, can speak, I can speak to that because I, I am now one of the commissioners. Um, we talked about it. We don't know what we're going to do. We, we've talked also about closing because we want to give Tritown Beach sort of a complete makeover, uh, for lack of a better term. Whether we close or not, that's not decided yet, but we have talked about it. So it's up in the air whether we'll be open or not. Okay. Um, I, I think it's smart to plan that we will be open and then we can always pivot rather than the reverse. When will we see information on what's been spent in the past years? Jim, there, I'm, I'm trying to- No information whatsoever. Yeah, I, I'm, I brought that up um, at the last meeting and no one really had a, 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 a solid answer. <laughs> you gotta give me a little bit more time to dig into it. We, I literally oh, just got on the, on the commission. Yeah, I think that's going to be important um, moving forward um, for us to be able to face uh, the taxpayer and to justify um, future fundings. Um, you know, something could be done with that facility that would make it shine. It would be a real feather in our cap. That, that, I, I think so anyway. That's sort of, and I don't want to get too too involved in it now, right now, obviously. Right. That's sort of the, the plan. Okay. Um, my my concern and my goal is more to find out what earned revenue looks like over the years. Um, are, are they doing a good job collecting fees from participants and that kind of thing? Yeah. I don't I don't worry so much about where the the budgeted dollars have gone because that that has gone to largely to salaries and a little bit of maintenance, and clearly not enough maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, we're it's going to take a little bit of time. But yeah, we're getting there. Sure, okay. good. Then the other one here that has a, a larger increase is the library. Right. And I, I think part of that answer is that they need to spend a certain percentage of last year's budget to maintain state aid. I think that's what we hear every year. Mm -hmm. But we can hear it again this year. Yeah, I think I think it would be, you know, they've always done, you know, a fine job in, in, in explaining, you know, what they're requesting. So, um you know, I think if they just run through that again, it'd be fine. Um, obviously, the next one is of, uh, of ongoing interest. Um, and I would say that we would um, certainly like to see them again. And from my perspective, it, you know, we'll ask them again. Now, I know this was one of those years and they provided a lot of they provided services for elderly people. Whether they're they were closed. in our town or not, I don't know. But given the year that we had, hey, 
it is what it is and the money was in there. But going forward again, this will now be year four where we're asking them to prove that Waitley residents use their services. And we got to put the onus on them and we got to tell them that if they can't show that fact, there is no way we can support dollars going into their facility. They're in another town. <laughs> you know? Close. <laughs> so I don't know how other people feel about that. It'd be, you know, it, it'd be great to hear. And if you guys want to voice your opinions, that'd be fantastic. It's um, closed. What's that? It's closed. Well, it's closed now. Yeah. But yeah. and it's been well, closed all year. So I'm not sure you're gonna be able to to they're gonna they're gonna be able to tell you how many Whaley residents received the the meals program, the drive-through meals program. They haven't but, yet. <clears throat> We've been asking for that for two years. No, well, no, that's that's that Dan, if you heard what I said, I said the meals program while they've been closed. All right. Yeah. Um, that's the that's the only new data that, that they're going to be able to come up with at this point is my guess. Mm -hmm. um, but they can certainly be able to they'll certainly be able to, to give you data on the number of Waitley residents that took advantage of the meals program. And that is an indicator of how many residents take it, you know, proportionally right. take advantage of the center. And that's an that's an inexact science, obviously, and data point. But it is an indicator. It's a, it's a leading indicator. And also, while while they're closed, maybe the staff can set up a system by which we can better track it going forward. Oh, brother, you're sure. reaching for the moon. Sure. Uh, right. I mean, the the staff has less to do with fewer pe with yeah. people not in the building. Maybe they can spend some time yeah. setting if, some something up. Figuring if, out. It's the the concern concern I have. Uh, for the senior center, I keep hearing rumors here and there is, is the need to make improvements to the facilities itself. I, I don't see that anywhere in a budget. And, and to do that, you need either money to make improvements or you need money to hire a consultant to tell you what needs to be improved. Uh, if you don't put money in a budget like that, we're gonna keep continuing the way it is with fewer or maybe not an increase in people and the conditions really deteriorating and what are we going to have to have a special meeting appropriation to get some action done i think some planning needs to be done on the senior center well, and it should be in somebody's budget Whaley's budget south deerfield's budget and what sunderland is in it as well it's time right. to do something seriously about it you, you may not you may not recall but we um as a as a select board voted to <clears throat> use our regional planning money from the FERCOG in a three town initiative to do a needs assessment for the senior center. Um, you know, you're talking to someone who doesn't think a dime should be spent on the building and that they need that a new building is, is, is necessary. That building's a dump. Uh, it doesn't serve the needs of our seniors. Um, it, 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 you know, I, I, I could go on and on, but there's a needs assessment that will be, be that will be getting as soon as we get that appropriation from the state and FERCOG that the three towns will be doing because you can't plan for a building unless you know what services the building is going to offer. And again, I use this flippantly, but if, if the needs assessment said that they want to put a bowling alley into a senior center, well, then you, then you have that, that information. If the needs assessment says you want a dart room, you need that information. It's all about the needs assessment first. So that, you're, what you're saying, we have started to move forward on with that budgeted amount from, from FERCOG and, and the state. Okay, but is that going to be enough to implement some of the recommendations from that budget? It is, from strictly, that it is strictly a planning grant. You have to move forward on that, I, I, I would suppose, in, in order to take that building seriously. But another thing I would like to inject right now and is... We have a local council on aging, which is asking actually for a decrease of $350. Um, now, I remember that woman, she came in and she was a, she was a spitfire. Um, she looked like she was gonna really make things happen. I don't know what has happened there, but 
it would be interesting to speak with her and ask her if we put this money into her budget versus sending it over to South Deerfield, what could she do? That, that would be a very interesting conversation. And Brian, I, I think it's one we should try to have. Yeah, I would like to know that information too. Find out what she's done on the local council of aging and then see where it can go from there. She's and no longer on the council on aging. I don't believe she's on the council on aging anymore. I don't know. I don't know. She's not. She's not on the council yet. She she's not. So who who is the council on aging? Oh, for that. Dan Kennedy. I'm me. Dan? I'd say keep working. You don't need the place. Okay. <laughs> Well, let's we we should hunt that answer down as to who is responsible for the local council on aging currently. Yeah, I, yeah, it's the budget was submitted by Katie McGrail. There are still members of the council on aging. That this is a this is a uh, a large discussion that a, a long a long discussion that needs to happen at some point for sure. Is that what you call an ad hoc committee? Is that is is that what we got going on here? No. Nope. Okay. All right. Anyone else want to see anyone other than um, South County Senior? Because we should have a discussion with them. Um, Tritown Beach, we need to have a discussion there because the public needs to know that. And um, it would be interesting to see if there is any substance to the local council on aging and what they're doing with this pittance of a thousand dollars i i have no idea but okay onward you know so so i have tritown beach library south county senior center is that right or not That's the library good. um anyone else um would like to see additional individuals no okay. all right that's good public health um Really the, the one that stands out is the, the Foothills Health District. Um, and I think that's because they had to bring on additional staff, but we could ask. I don't think they show up. I think we've asked, have they ever shown up for a meeting? I, maybe. Yeah, Fran usually shows up, right? Oh, it's Fran. Oh, okay, yeah. sure, 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 yeah. Yeah, Fran comes in, that's right, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. He, I'll, and I'll he can talk about so he can talk about all of it, actually. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. All right. So I'll I'll, I'll note Foothills Health District. Um, public safety. The ones that stand out are fire, ambulance, and I guess police somewhat. But we should talk about police because there's significant changes proposed at the state level that will mm -hmm. impact local policing, especially small town policing, with the possibility of significant costs associated with that. And that would, I, that would be good good to hear. Yeah, Jim has a so in the in the budget book, Jim has an outline and he outlined some of those costs and you know yep. have, getting local police departments certified, additional training, um, upgrades with body can it's it, yep. it's, it's a long road. Um, the police reform bill really um, makes small town policing really challenging in a cost really. effective way. Huh. Well, that's that's unfortunate. It's like a wait and see. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll talk. We'll, obviously, it'd be good to hash that out a little bit. Okay. So, do you want the top three there? Yeah. I assume. You want me to have Zach uh, shorten his uh, presentation now? That I'm would assuming be all that salaries. Yeah. I'm assuming that increases just salaries. But it's also good to talk to Zach about, you know, stuff like response time and, you know, how the payments are coming through from insurance and all of those little intangibles that I'd also like to hear from him on what the impact of COVID over the past year has that been would be, on their that would be good as well operations. 
Yeah. He, he gives a good presentation. It's you know, right to the point, and he's a good guy to have in. All right, Public Works. Yep. Um, well, obviously, Keith is going to be there. Um, and um, you find out how this challenging year, how he's met that and what's coming up. And um, I, um, I'm i always doing a little searching as to, and I shouldn't, I understand that, but I'm always doing a little searching as to how to look at different metrics in regards to weighing um, the value of certain expenditures. And in regards to highway, um, I've always felt we should look at the total miles that we have to keep in the town of Waitley that we have to service. And because that's pretty, that remains the same pretty much year after year. And what is the, what is, what is our cost per mile for just public works? And just really quick, um, I have, when I look today, because I went onto the state web website to look at how many miles we have in the town of Whitley that have been accepted, and it's 31.27 miles. That, that may not be exactly accurate, but if you would do that, um, we're about $12,822 um, per mile right now when our total public works. But what's uh, the state average then? I don't know. See, those, this may be a great number. Especially if we look at towns in the region, you know, I know, um, I know, I know. Deerfield has ninety miles of roads, a yeah. shitty roads too. Yeah, but I don't have any idea what their budget is either. Right. So if we just use the miles, it'd kind of be apples to apples because, you know, if you just take us compared to De Deerfield, obviously their budget's going to be higher, but they have more miles. So you can get a per mile view of what we're spending, and I, I just think it's a metric that. Um, that would give that would ground us in some way. Um, so, and it's easy to do. So, and, and anyway, that's just. Uh, and when it comes to fire and police, you know, what's our cost per life in this town? Because um, that's essentially what people pay for. They pay for being protected and taken care of, and there's obviously a cost to that. Um, and I think that, um, moving forward, that's what are we paying per person in this town for those kind of services? And it's easy to do. So anyway, um, I think that's a point of discussion that we could have with Keith when he comes in just to see what he thinks about it. And maybe in the meantime, I'll do a little bit of, uh, searching around and see what the other towns are. And Brian, I'll get to you to see if you can get their bud budget, budget numbers. Um, for roads, so all right, I'm off. I'm off the soapbox. I, I've got one other. We'll have one other question for Keith, and that is, what's the current condition of the garage, and are we looking at capital expenditures down the road to mm -hmm. improve it, maintain it, or replace it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, replacement item. I think. Yes, we will be. <clears throat> oh. It, it may be good to look at the, the cost per mile, but you also got to consider all these special grants and funding that the state provides for special projects. I mean, we're talking some projects in the millions of dollars that are going to be done in the next several years that may not show up in anybody's budget. But You're absolutely right. And it won't roads. show, and, uh, and yeah. Fred, it won't show up on anybody's tax bill either. No, but the well, money that the money that comes out of the tax bill, the money that gets that's hit that hits everybody's pocketbook, is the money in the budgets that per are mile. being that are coming per, through per mile. Per mile. Well, and a lot of this is is you're going to find I think based on the, on the amount of Chapter ninety money that each town gets. As well so, from the state. So. so Fred, are you saying that you wouldn't want to have a metric that that compared apples to apples with other towns? 
You, well, you wouldn't want to at least take a look at that to see what that might be like. That doesn't interest you at all? Well, it, it, it does, but you got to be careful what you're comparing and how much special state monies each town gets because that varies all over the place. I think everybody in this committee is very careful and we're very careful before we move forward. So uh, we will be careful. Okay. Well, I think you have to be a little bit careful in using that metric though, because for us, a, sm a highway department will have a certain minimum requirement, sort of uh, a nut for equipment and personnel and whatever. And the smaller town is the group greater percentage of, uh, you know, the more that's going to be of the per mile cost. You know, you have to have a highway department, whether you have one mile or 31 miles or 150 miles. Yep. So, right. you know, if we had one mile, we would still have, we would be, have a greater cost per mile because we still would have to hire someone to maintain it and have the equipment, et cetera. I don't think that's true because... If we only had one mile and Deerfield had 100 miles, wouldn't they have to purchase and provide more services for those 100 miles than we would have to for the one mile? Yes, increment uh, on the margin, yes, but you've got an initial investment cost in personnel, let, particularly, to take care of anything. And while that personnel might be able to take care of one mile or five miles, if you only have one, it won't get spread out over the five. I also at think end, at the end I, of the day, you get a cost per, per mile. Right. But I'm just saying that. Yeah, we got a smaller town. Right. We're not <clears throat> we're not trying to compare this to other towns right now. We just want oh. a cost per mile okay. to understand what it's costing for public health. Yeah, and now we're talking about Chapter 90 money. No. no uh, just about what our taxpayers pay. pay. It's what but the damn the, the number doesn't, unless we compare it to other towns, the number doesn't mean anything. Very we good. Have to, we have to yes, know. Yes, it does. If we can look at last year or five years back or look at what's coming up in two years. Well, that, that's true. We can compare it to our own, but we don't know if right. whatever it is is a good number per mile, you know. Right. We don't compare it to other towns. Right, which is why we have to take the next step and take a look at these metrics in towns around us. And I don't really see anybody doing that. Um, and I think it would be um, it would be it would be a good comparative. I'm not saying well, you. Yeah, I think it would also. I just want to uh, give a caveat that it's not you know. If our number is higher than someone else's, it's not necessarily because I we're less you. efficient. Absolutely. I'm with you 100% on that, Fred. Um, hey, hey, Paul. Yeah. It's also important to, to not rely too much on cost per capita because you can have a, a large geographic footprint and a small population, and the reverse is also true. Um, yeah. So, you know, the roads still need to be maintained, whether there's one person living on a road or 100 people living on a road? No question. No doubt about it. Hey, Paul, um, I, I think Joyce had a comment. Yeah, uh, it, maybe it was kind of covered by Fred, but then maybe I can second what he said. I'm fine with finding out the cost per mile, but I don't want that to be the be all and end all of how we assess our, our budgets. And I think, Paul, you said something earlier that kind of is completely in agreement with that. That yeah. uh, that you know, this is one metric. It's not, it's not the one and only thing we we do to make decisions. I'm completely on board with that. I think it's something new for us to look at, but it just is another metric that is somewhat of a constant because the miles in this town tend not to change over time, yeah. and yeah, um, maybe they will. Who knows? Somebody puts a new road in, the road's accepted. We get new people on the road. Those kind of things happen, but um, you can reflect that in the, uh, in the process. So, um, and it's, the, the thing about it is it's very easy to do. Um, and it's not, you know, something that's laborious that 
Brian's going to spend all kinds of time on or anybody else. Heck, we can all do it. Um, it's an easy thing. All right. I didn't mean for this to. The, the biggest, biggest, to me, the biggest item on here is that I guess can fluctuate the most uh, depending on weather is the winter, winter roads. And I think somewhere in a, in a budget process, Brian has got a breakdown of what's included in there, right? Salaries and, yeah. and uh, materials, say. Uh, and, you know, other than sal salaries and the whole public works budget, that is a significant item. And maybe we ought to be looking at what are our policies for maintaining winter roads? I mean, yes, we can continue the way we have and spend a majority of what, 40, 50% of our budget just on winter roads. Is that what other towns are doing? I, I yep. think there could be some savings there to still, uh, you know, budget items to, to reduce the, depending on what is our policy mm -hmm. for maintaining roads in the winter. Yeah. If we looked at that. What do other towns have? Well, that's the key. But we don't necessarily want to compare ourselves to a town pro or con because we have that's a value proposition in terms of the in terms of the preparedness of, of, of winter roads and how often you plow and, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think we need to set that metric for our comfort level within our residents, um, because you, you clearly notice when you drive across a border during a snowstorm one town is more prepared or, or, or is ahead of the game or behind the game to another. And it's based upon the expectations of, of a community. I don't think it should be compared to other communities. And I, and I agree with you. And, I, and West Waitley is the exact example of that. Um, <laughs> you can have a snowstorm and you can drive over to Conway and you know where Conway starts right. just by the condition of the road. Um, it's, it's night and day. Right. Very often. So, yep, that's absolutely true. But getting back just one second bef before we leave this uh, cost per mile, you know, we've been doing cost per pupil in the school system for a, for a long, long time. And look at the variables there. I mean, they're just they're they're forever. Um, and, and but it just it's just it just gives you it's sort of a bellwether. Um to what has happened and what is happening now. Um, and that's all I meant it to be. So, okay. Year over year comparison within yep. time. Right. Let's okay, move Brian. on. Let's move on. Um, <clears throat> next one's insurance and benefits. Um, we expect group health insurance, um, premiums to stay flat. Um, that's just, I think Linda is projecting that there's one less it looks like probably a, a single policy. Um, Franklin County Retirement, that's an assessment that we get. Um, an OPEB liability, that's something that we that we elected not to fund last year, mm -hmm. um, but that we typically fund at that, at that cost. Okay. Um, I don't think there's anybody on here that we normally bring in or whether... You know, I don't think I don't think there's any use to doing that. Hey, hey, Paul, let me just one thing to just think about for okay. quick, quick. Go ahead, Jonathan. Um, you know, last year we didn't we didn't fund OPEB, and I, I think having someone come in to explain the consequences of delaying OPEB in, um, payments um, it's important yeah. because you're, you're digging a hole. You're simply digging a hole for future finance administration, finance departments and, and so yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm good with that. Brian, you got that down? Yeah. I can see if, if, if Lynn has somebody that. Okay. That can get in touch with. Good. Um, let's see, where are we? Uh, temporary loan interest. Reserve fund, I assume we're, we want to do 20000 again. That's within the discretion of the finance committee to spend. Um, FERCOG is, is down $1,400. Uh, town vehicle fuels. This is one I'm, I'm not really too keen on, but I, I, I added it in. Um, I'm just a little bit concerned about the price of gas, how, how high the price of gas might go up. Yeah, um, yeah. I agree. Under our sort of the 
yeah. what's happened in Washington and the, the, mm -hmm. the political differences in, in, in the, the parties in control. So right. um, it's just something to, to bear watching. Yeah. Um, schools, so Waitley Elementary School, 44602. Mm -hmm. um, so the Waitley Elementary, the school committee has not held their public hearing or voted on their budget yet. Um, everybody, everybody received a, um, an invite to the Frontier public hearing that happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I believe this budget stayed the same as a decrease in 64, almost a, just over $64,000. And then Franklin Tech, who who we really got it last year, um, is a reduction of just True. under 31,000. Mm. Um, so that gives us a net of, of almost a net decrease. Uh, yeah. um, but like I said, I, I've invited them. We typically want to hear from them anyways because it's such yep. a significant portion of our budget. They are going to come on, on the 23rd. Yep. Um, um, and and I it would be um, it would be it would be nice if they could tell us what their cost per pupil is. I know that doesn't always occur when we ask that question. Um, so if they could be ready with that. Answers. What school? What school? What's what? What school are you talking about? Franklin Tech. Just take their budget and divide it by how many students they have. No, no, no. I'm just, no, I, I mean all of them. I mean, we've, we've, we've had Frontier in, and we've asked them, and I can remember <laughs> meetings we've asked them that question. They did not have an answer. Frontiers is over 19,000 right now. Well, you need 30. to hear it. Believe me, this is, this is a, a logistical matter. It needs third, to come from them. They need to largest, say it on camera. Third largest in Western Mass. There you go. Okay. Well, we need to hear it from them. So, okay. Yeah, so they're invited. Paul, you saw the, I, I have not seen a budget narrative for Frontier or right. Waitley. I, I emailed the business manager and I, I see Paul on it um, yesterday because mm -hmm. uh, we typically like to get those and, and look at those. Mm -hmm. um, at a time. So I asked her to, to, to respond by Friday so we could push that yep. out to everybody. Okay. Um, the reply I got back, I was not too confident, but. Um, I hey guys, think... it's Patty Devine. Sorry, I got on late. I thought it started at seven. I was wrong. Hey, Patty, <laughs> how, you, how you doing? I'm, I'm well, thank you. Okay. Um, I have a quick question uh, in regards to the, the frontier budget. It, are we assessed? And I'm, this is my second meeting. So. Gotcha. I'm just learning this whole thing. Are we assessed per student? Or are we assessed based on population of the um, town? Population of students. Student so, populations. Okay, yeah, so we could take the 916,000 and divide it by, or 917 almost, and in theory, divide it by the number of students and have a per student price. Right. And I think it a, might be uh, a five-year rolling average of the students from your town so that you don't get so. extreme bumps okay. up and down. But Isn't yeah, basically. Right. But in general, it's generally speaking. Well, and some people are going to use other revenue streams as, as part of it. People, different people will, will say the budget is different than other people. I know that sounds odd. No, um, I'm a cost engineer. It's what I do for a living. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> So it'll depend upon how you want to define an operating budget. Okay, just, again, I'm just learning. So yeah. thank you. To yep. compare numbers for per student per town, you gotta to go back to the, to, the fun, to the formula, how they determine that. It's not just based on students or population. Each school district has their own formula. So you just can't divide two numbers. It's, it's other things in there. Well, those are the things we want to know, Fred. I, th I think uh, uh, Franklin Tech showed you some of that in their, in their uh, descriptions there. Of yep. the budget. I don't know. I don't remember the other two schools did that, but. Hmm. Yeah, the, it, it's, it's a little bit more in depth in terms of the, you know, the, the, the minimum spending that each town has to do. And then yeah. you get charged above the minimum, but in terms of a, uh, in terms of a uh, uh, calculation about, sort of cost that, um, you know, tax monies divided by the number of students will get you, you know, 
that cost is how much of the of, of the tax levies paying for that per student you know um, i think uh, yeah I, I think it would be a, i think it would be a good number for us to try to get our arms around so yep brian yep are all cola increases and wage and salary increases reflected in this draft one for schools and all other departments for schools Yes, I believe so. We can check with them on the 23rd, but I believe it is. No, the personnel committee has not made a recommendation to the finance committee yet. Okay. As to what the call would be. Good question, Jim. Okay. The next one is debt. Um, so you recall last year, one of the ways that we reduced the tax levy was by shifting our last debt payment for um, for the fire truck was around eighty one thousand dollars, and we we decided to to pay that with um, I believe it came out of free cash, so that that obviously reduced that budget for FY twenty one. There were two purchases that were authorized last year. One was an excavator, and one was a wood chipper. Um, so those payments, this was this will be the second payment on the five-year lease purchase um, that are going to need to be paid in FY22. All righty. And uh, questions about that equipment? Can, uh, Keith will be here, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, the last one is the uh, Enterprise Fund for the Water Department. Um, again, this the significant... The reason why operations has has 2097, 267 when it really has really 97,000 is that they need to show as revenue um, what they anticipate collecting from the hookup fees for the water merger project in order to make that expenditure in the same fiscal year. So that's why that's significantly higher than it has been in FY20, which isn't shown here, 2019, 18, those, those years. Uh, their overhead costs are are a set percentage, as detailed out in their in their budget, uh, a certain percentage of general fund costs. So, accountant, treasurer, collector, insurance, those types of things. Um, so that that what you see there, fifty three nine forty two, is going to change as we change the budgets in the general fund. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it it's around it's around the same. Um, will Wayne, I, we can, we can get Wayne in, right? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I can ask him. Yeah. And the reason I say that is this, yeah, granted this doesn't come, you know, this, this is, these funds are taken care of by individuals who are in this system as we, we all know, but yet, um, those individuals still rely on the finance committee to be looking at numbers and asking about, again, what's happening in the water department. So I think it's important that um, Wayne comes in and we have at least some type of a discussion. Okay, so, so to wrap this up, I have, I'll have i read off who I have listed. Yep. Um, I have, or, or budgets that we want to, talk about them in greater detail, town buildings, audit, assessors, Tritown Beach Library, South County Senior Center, fire, ambulance, police, public works. Um, we have a question about OPEB. Um, and then we obviously have the schools in water. Right. Okay. I jumped around at the end there. Is, is Fran on that list for public health? Or the dumb um, Good, good catch. Yeah, Foothills. Yeah. And he can give us an update on the, on, we recall last year there was a lot of volatility in the recycling markets. Right. And we thought there were going to be significant costs, but I mean, there have been some costs, but the. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think anywhere near as much as they thought. No, the trend is is definitely in the right direction. The, the The resale market has rebounded, which is good. And I think also we can get a report on if they have increased revenues because the bag price went up. 
Yeah. Well, of you, course. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's the list. That's who we will interact <laughs> with. Brian, you good? Yeah, I'll schedule those folks for the 23rd in April 6th. Okay. Um, and if there, there's, yeah, we'll, we'll see. If we need to add another date, then I'll, I'll let you guys know. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay. Um, you have on the agenda a capital improvement plan. Capital improvement planning committee, yeah. Um, why don't you, what is that about? So that's the, I'll show you that. Okay. Um, let me just pull it up here. Wait for it. It's coming. Wait for it. <laughs> you know, Bob, some things never change. I mm. just want to put that out there. <laughs> it's true. Why should they? <laughs> so this is not something we need to take action on, but the Capital Improvement Planning Committee has finished its recommendations for capital projects okay. for FY22. Um, so I just wanted to, to yeah. give these to the Finance Committee mm -hmm. um, and the Select Board because it's the report supposed to go to both. Right. Um, a lot of these are carryovers from last year that we didn't fund because we wanted to, we, we put an emphasis on, on saving money instead of spending money. Mm -hmm. Um, so these are the recommendations, um, uh, priority A projects. Those are the ones that, that they think are urgent, high priority projects, um, the library handicap accessibility improvements, installation of emergency backup generator at the town offices, purchase and installation of public safety radios. That's year two of two. We split that, mm -hmm. um, purchase of a new snowplow. That is a new one. Um, as well as the purchase of a new oven for the elementary school kitchen. And the idea of talking about these now is that those folks who we invite, most of them have capital projects that we may want to discuss with them. So it's good to know that these are out there. Right. So we can talk to the school about the oven, for instance. And I think one of the salient points of these numbers here, if we reflect, I'm, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, but if we reflect back to the South County Senior Systems Center, and if you're the average taxpayer in the town of Waitley, and you know that the people who are running your town, including the Finance Committee, have no idea of the utilization by members of your town for the $24,000 they're asking for in the coming year. And we look on here and we say, oh my gosh, that would pay for new oven for the ele elementary school. That would be uh, safety radios and equipment. That would be classroom car carpeting. That is why we hope we, you have to hold their feet to the fire. And just as if you're looking at this from your average Joe taxpayer, those kind of questions come up all the time. And that's why we're here. Okay, I'm off that soapbox. All right, so priority B, um, these are projects, high priority projects that should, could be done as funding becomes available. Replace classroom carpets with flooring tiles, reconstruct and resurface the driveway and parking lot at the elementary school and exterior building repairs and painting at the police station. Those, all three of those were, were deferred from last year, I believe. Yeah. Um, and the school can speak to these projects um, when they come on the 23rd. Right. Um, priority C, worthwhile projects. Um, there was a request from the cemetery commissioners for, for new fencing and gates at the East Cemetery. Um, some of the fencing has been damaged there. 
and what they told us that the gates at the West Cemetery right. are also damaged. Yeah. Um, renovate and update the Veterans Monument in surrounding park area. That's been an ongoing project. Um, the subject, it's it's uh, the current subject of a grant that's going to be going in, and in, in, in it's been as, submitted as a CPA project. Um, and then there was a request from from the highway to purchase a used um, lawn tractor um, for snow removal. Um, and I put a note on the side here that the CIPC had a really hard time rating this project. Um, obviously, if, if sidewalks are going to continue to be cleared, and this is a discussion I, I, I want to add to the select board agenda at the next meeting, if the sidewalks are going to be cleared and they're going to be done by an outside contractor, this purchase isn't necessary, so it would be not a high priority, but right. if the decision is made that the sidewalks are going to be cleared and we should do them in-house, then having this piece of equipment is 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 important. What's wrong with the homeowners? If you can get a bylaw through. You're probably headed that you're probably headed that way in this state anyway. So I can I ask another question real quick? Sure. Do these prices include contracting costs? In other words, does it to include the cost to go through the town and go through the state to procure through through the state contracting systems? Or is it just the rough cost for the oven, twenty one thousand dollars? Brian? Yes. Yeah, it's the it, it, this questions we can ask the school, but this is a, a cost estimate that they have. For the they, whole package or just the piece they, of equipment? They would be required to, to solicit bids. Um, I could ask them specifically if this is actually on, on the state on the state bid list. I don't know that. That That's a question that we could ask for. Um, um, okay. I can't think of his name. No, I just know that with, with our contracting costs, you know, it, the procurement cost is one thing, but to add the contracting level, your your um, level of effort, Brian, uh, you know, yep. Lynn's level of effort. I don't know if that's just sort of included because we already pay for you as an overhead cost or if we pay for you or if there's an additional cost incurred. And that's what I'm asking. Is, yes. is there additional cost incurred because of the contracting effort that we'd have to do no. Moving forward. Okay. No. It, it's costs that are, that are, it, it's things that Lynn and I take on separately because, because really the elementary school is, is a, technically a department of, of the town. So, um, I think Brian, when you asked for submittals here, which include the cost. I think most of these did a uh, reasonable estimate of the total cost of everything that would be needed for, for that item. And I think many of these are based on, on more than one estimate to a vendor or a contractor to get a, a, a price. So it's not somebody's wish list price. I think, and that kind of reflects prior years, these have been kind of reasonable costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patty's asking the, the question about th there's there's costs associated with with my time putting out, you know, sending out the bids and, and when there's additional costs there that that we just that we just assume. You do that for a lot of activities as part of our as part of our job responsibilities. Yeah. So so the cost to buy that oven is not twenty one thousand. It's twenty one thousand plus, I think. Okay. So I just I just wanted to talk about those, uh, throw those out there, so that we have these in mind when we talk to certain individuals over the next two meetings. Yeah. Um. Final. Just real quick. Um. When Frontier comes in. Do you think they will be ready to speak to um, the monies they gained from that bond and all of the work that had to be done in the school, the track and et cetera, et cetera? I can prep them on that, yeah. Yeah, okay. 
I don't know if they'll, <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't know. Fred, Fred, you're on the Capitol Committee there. Yes. The track has gone out for design? Yes, bids have, no, bids have gone out for construction of the track. Okay. And bids have already been received, uh, I think at least three, and we're meeting uh, tomorrow afternoon, I think, to select one of the bids. Uh, one of the contractors uh, based on their bids and and what I could see they are reasonable what has been submitted so far so so they are moving forward on the, on the, on the track and, and the goal I think is to do that this this summer uh, start probably in, in May or June maybe when kids aren't there or using the track and have it done by the fall time Fred, do the bids include references? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there was quite a bit of, of references, quite a bit of, of detail. Uh, I didn't look at the references because it was it was just too much to download in the package of material. So uh, the committee will look at that and, and decide. So, but they had, they do look like qualified contractors. I could say that they have experience. So. Paul, I think you're muted. Paul, you're muted. How's he going to know that? There you go. Thanks for the heads up, guys. Um, hey, um, Fred, just to, can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Um, Fred, are you, are you involved with the other pieces of where that bond money is going to be spent other than the track? Uh, yes, I think there was there is a priority list of improvements that were going to be done with that bond money, and the committee, I guess, has kind of endorsed that, and it's moving through the school committee. Okay, good. Uh, we did look at individual items on there, what they were going to repair, what needed to be done soon, what could be delayed, what other sources of funds could be used, such as for security, technology, equipment, energy efficiency, that kind of stuff. So, so there is uh, other sources being looked at. And, and yeah, the committee has been meeting, I, I don't know, three, four times a year or whatever to look at that and, and help prioritize, so. Thank you. Ryan, anything else? I think that should get us to the, the 23rd. I've got one thing for Brian. Okay. I saw yeah. the other day that the town was in line and allocated roughly $150,000 from the COVID Relief Act. And I want, if Brian can keep us informed on what the restrictions on that money will be when he finds <clears throat> out. Yep. How, how tight. I know that the last Relief Act, the restrictions were very tight. Yeah. I understand that this will not be quite as tight to know what we can spend it on. Okay. Yeah, I think those monies are going to come through the state, so we'll have to see what what restrictions are on those. Yeah, the the original CARES Act money was tight. It was it was essentially money for response costs to the the public health crisis. Mm -hmm. If this is geared more towards economic recovery, I would anticipate that that the the restrictions would be a little looser, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, just asking if you can let us know when you find out. Okay. Yep. Very good. Anything else? Are we done? It looks like we're, we're done. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Wait, I have one more question. Oh, oh, oh I how can I? <clears throat> no, no, no. It's a neat, it's a simple one. How can I pick up a packet, a, a packet that's already printed? It was there at the office with your I name work on till, it. I work eight to four. <laughs> that really doesn't work for me today. I'll tell can you. I get it on, no, get this, it is, on this is what I'm going to do. Tomorrow, I'm going to go pick it up, and I'm going to drive it over to the pharmacy. Good for you. I am. I'm telling you, I'm doing it. All right. Perfect. All right. Okay. Can I ask another stupid question before we adjourn? Is Absolutely. 6 o'clock the normal start time? Because really, honestly, I'm used to a 7 o'clock, so it didn't even occur to me that you guys – I didn't even stop work until 6. So We're, we're all old. So, yeah, 6 is good for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't tell him your nickname. We, we're going to do it. <laughs> no, uh, no, you should. 
You should no. tell us. It should, well, it'd be better if you're... I'm making a motion to adjourn. It's still recording, though. You want us to shut the recording off? <laughs> okay. Um, we'll That's take okay. that under advisement, and uh, we'll let you know. Okay. All right. So 6 uh, o'clock in the future, right? Pretty right. much. Okay. Yeah. Cool beans. Did Bob, did you have a motion to adjourn? I did. I'll second that. We'll get a second. Um, have a wonderful week, weekend. Thank you, guys. Stay safe and be well. All right. Okay. See you guys. Thank you. See you next week. Bye.